Going to get the smoker going today. Yes, sir. How's about a little fire, Scarecrow? All right. Okay, what we have is some corned beef briskets. These have been soaking overnight. How to get rid of some of that salty uh, over salting because I'm going to be seasoning it. That's some Dijon mustard and some dry rub. Putting it in the smoker for probably four hours or at least until the internal temperature comes to 160 degrees. So let me set you up here somewhere where you can watch here. Get up close and personal with it. Roll it down with a little Dijon. I found this. I've never done this before. It's only the actual third time I used the smoker. I wanted to try it out a few times. Get used to it before I put anything on video. Ugh. Man. It's all trial and error come across this recipe on the internet only because I had these corned beefs in the freezer for quite a while I picked up during the St. Patrick's Day celebration time they were really cheap and uh, they've been in the freezer for a couple months so I figured I better use them so instead of the regular traditional way we do it with the boiled dinner I figure what the hell let's see if there's a smoking recipe and lo and behold there is on the internet So here we are. Let me wash my hands right quick. And we'll apply the dry rub. I'm using Grillmaster brown sugar and bourbon and smokehouse maple because these are the only ones I got available at the moment. So I'm gonna use these. Get a chance to use them up. Generous amount. While that Charcoal is doing its thing out there. I'm subscribed to a guy, a guy called T-Roy. T-Roy something or other. You guys go check that channel out. He's got some wicked smoking videos. He's been doing it for a while. He uses the Weber and various other smokers he's got. He's got a pretty good brisket method. He likes to use Excuse me. Worcestershire sauce. He likes to use Worcestershire sauce on here. It helps the uh, rub stick to his meat better. Mmm, smoky. This container's been sitting out in the camper for a little while. So it's been froze, it's been thawed, it's been... So you guys get the gist of this. Let me get it situated and then we'll be out in the... Putting it on the old charcoal. So that's what we got so far. We'll just let this sit for a little while. Wait for that charcoal. I gotta get the grill ready. Or the smoker ready. Get the um, water into it. Bring it up to temperature and give her. Okay, as soon as I get to that 250 degrees I'm going to uh, go ahead and use the scraper and clean off the top grid, grate rather. There's three different levels you can smoke at. And I'm going to cook these briskets at the top where most of my heat is. Because heat rises, don't you know. And uh, right after I clean it, I'm going to be throwing these hickory chunks in there to give it the smoked flavor really good smoke flavor with the hickory 
and then uh, try to maintain that 250 to 225 or even 200 somewhere in that range for up to four hours with this stuff to get a good smoke on there and um, you know the first three hours I, I'm hearing is, is the good smoke time after that you're taking a chance of getting it starting to taste kind of funny but uh, you know it is what it is but maintaining that 200 to 250 somewhere in there you know until I get that internal temperature of the meat up to 160 you know and then it's done so all right all right so let's we're over 250 let's get in here and clean this grill off Just some leftover I'm not too worried about the leftover bits on there as long as it gets cooked properly got the proper amount of water in the bottom pan. I'm gonna guess the water helps maintain better control of the temperature, introduces moisture, ultimately a better product. Make sure there's no wires stuck in there. We don't want wires in our meat. Should you read that one? Hear that on the internet? Holy shit, somebody got freaking a, a little wire bit from a freaking metal scraper into their stuck in their esophagus. Talk about a bad day. Oh boy. Alright, they're good to go. They're on the grill. Lid down. Let this get back up to 250. And then I'll throw the hickory in there. This stuff here. I like the chunks last longer. So we'll fish out three good ones there for now and I can always add later. Oh yeah. Just spread these coals out a bit. Got my hickory chunks in here. Them in as best they can. There we go. That'll make the smoke. Everything will be nice, nice, nice. As soon as that gets back up to temp, I'll close the damper down a bit. Try to maintain that 250 or 225. Somewhere's in there. comes the nice smoke now got that barrel from the mill I use it for putting salt in it salt and sand in the winter so yeah I'm gonna make a peach cobbler in the old Dutch oven, but first I'm going to grill these up. Adds a bit of a flavor to it, and then I'll uh, macerate them into a syrupy goodness to put in the bottom of the cobbler in the Dutch oven. Looks like I need to redo my metal deflectors, they're rotten out. Nope. Okay. Tell me when. Yep. Ready? Yeah. That's really loud, though. <laughs> Wind in the pool. All right, enough of that nonsense. Done. Oh, oh dick. 
Now we're going to take them off, put them on a tray, and then cover them with foil and let them rest for two hours. Perfect. Okay, I got the peaches prepped. They're macerated in some sugar. Look You're at the done. color. No. Because of the uh, the grilling, brought out the old. It's got some grill marks onto it. So we're going to put that in the old Dutch oven. This is the Camp Chef 12. And then uh, we fire up some yellow cake mix onto it. Probably do two two boxes of that on top of it. A little bit of butter dabbed all over. Put the cover on. Put some coals on top of it. Fire from underneath. When it's done, it's done. All right, peaches in, cake mix in. Now the trick to this is just put it in there. Don't mix it in, because if you mix it in, it won't come out right. It'll end up burning. Believe it or not, this stuff will all cook down to a nice tablet crust. Yeah, buddy. Spread it out a bit. I'll put the butter on here and give her. All right, as you see over here, we have a tripod set up for the um, over my fire. And of course, I got an umbrella because when I'm sitting out by the fire, Ginger's got to be in the shade. Especially Ginger's would, uh, you know, more like gray or even gone. Oh, you just picked up on that. Okay. Anyway. We're going to bring the uh, Dutch oven over to the tripod. Got the butter on there. Little dabs of butter. We're going to hang it on the tripod. Put some coals on the top. It's very important to have a Dutch oven like this where you can put coals on top. It makes a difference. you got to get that heat coming from the top too, especially when you're baking. So let's get down there and get it going. All right. I just made this thing this morning, so we're gonna test it out for the first time today, and I'll give you a closer look in a minute. I gotta get a shovel to get some of them coals on top. Hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Alright, so I got me my handy shovel here. I'll dig around and get some hot coals. Go on the top. Gotta get that cooking from the top as well. Oh, that's hot. Oh, could have a longer shovel, but come here. Oh, fuck, man, it's hot. Burning my fingers. Yeah, but. Of course, it's an extremely hot day out. As you can hear the cicadas in the background. So working around a campfire like this kind of sucks. But it's fun. I don't mind. So there we have it. We got probably enough heat from the bottom. Plenty of coals on the top. But this is my structure. All this is is um, it's one of these... Uh, you know, similar to the uh, the Quonset one there, but one of these carport poles or ridge lines or whatever it was. But uh, if you go back in some of my other videos, you'll probably see the raspberry bush um, support thing that I had built out of the same stuff. 
which was over here, but I got rid of them. Anyway, all I did is run this, uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just this wire, heavy gauge wire made out of uh, aluminum, bent around to hold it, support it, and I had this chain. And, uh, you know, I can adjust it. You know, I can get a different chain or I can just move the legs out a little and, and get, get it closer to the fire if I have to. So this is just something I come up with today. I didn't make a video on it. I just threw it together and this is the first time using it. And I got the meat off the smoker and um, it's in a tent, tent thing here, um, foil tent that'll um, keep the moisture in, the heat in, and it'll create a uh, moist environment and make that thing even more tender. Um, this is going to sit another hour. It's already been an hour already, and it's still hot. i got it sitting out here in the sun. Well, it's shady now, but sitting out here in the sun to keep it somewhat warm. But uh, I'm just doing the instructions that the uh, Internet told me. And while I got a minute, I might as well sit here and tell you, as I sit under the shade, um, I got a uh, Red Gone to Gray Facebook page now, if you want to go on over there and um, check it out, and those of you that are on Facebook. Um, I'm new to that. I'm not new to Facebook, but I'm new to the, the channel for the YouTube, and um, you know, putting these videos on there is probably all I'm going to do. Anybody that wants to, uh, you know, submit anything, um, I know a lot of other YouTubers that I know will probably be interested in sharing some of their videos on this, on my Facebook, that'd be, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, you know, of course, I, you know, it'll have to be approved through me first, but those of us in our community know that we keep it clean anyway, so... So, anyway, uh, we got some guests coming over. I got the in-laws coming over. Um, a good friend of mine's coming over with his daughter, and we're going to have a little cookout. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much uh, we'll get of the the friends. Um, you know, obviously, i got to get permission to, to film his daughter before I make videos on her. But the, uh, It's a beautiful day. It's a Sunday. Back to work tomorrow on Monday, second shift over the mill. I gotta work all week and then uh, next Sunday the daughter's having some surgery on her back. And uh, my troop is going to scout camp the same day, so I'm gonna be um, held up on, uh, you know, joining them until probably Tuesday morning at the earliest maybe even Monday night after her surgery I don't know it's out of town we're going to Springfield Mass for it um, there was a chance we might have had to go to Philadelphia for it and that would have been you know in the January or February if we went that route and the comfort level she's experiencing we decided to get it done now it conflicts with my scout camp but that's all right. We'll uh, we'll catch up with them guys. You know, probably uh, Tuesday. Cobbler's done. And the meat's done. And it's wicked, salty, but it mighty tasty. We got the dipping sauce, which is half Dijon and half barbecue sauce. Potato salad, macaroni salad, corn on the cob. Zucchini with peppers and onions.
I wanted to see, uh, let me see that for a second. <laughs> You're recording, honey. Is that too zoomed in on you? You want to be a YouTuber? Once again. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. I'll put this second on. Yeah, please. Yeah. That'd be funny as hell. I'm gonna get a copyright on this one. Sorry, they can have my three cents on this after video. Make sure it... No, don't roll even farther! Stupid thing! Hey, hey, hey! You're all dirty! Ow! Ow! You're down there with bare feet! I like it. Specifically, like... I thought there was like six cars. I thought there was like YouTube channel coming up. I don't know. I just never. Just don't remember seeing yellow. Apparently, she's a Rihanna star. Okay, give me the phone. Like grandma She's said. moving, no. yeah. She's Mary, you want to hear you? No, shit, grandma. Oh. Sit down. No. What? Yes, 